First movie is Nandor Fodor. Yes, Nandor Fodor and the Talking Mongoose. What a ridiculous title. I can't even pronounce Nandor Fodor. Here's the thing. It's not as silly as you think because Nandor Fodor is an actual parapsychologist who actually existed in this world we know as Earth. So this is sort of, in a weird way, based on a true story or based on real events. It centers on how in 1935, Dr. Nandor Fodor, played by Simon Pegg, he is investigating this claim that there is a talking mongoose who lives among a family. They're called the Irvings, and the the wife is just a really seemingly the perfect mom. She cooks really cool raspberry tarts and desserts, and the father is just maybe overly friendly. Their daughter has ventriloquist powers. She is a talent. She can throw her voice around. Most importantly, though, they're is there really a talking mongoose living amongst them and in the village where um, Nandor Fodor decides to investigate? Mini Driver is also in this movie as Anne, the assistant to Nandor Fodor, and also Christopher Lloyd. He plays this fellow parapsychologist. I think his name is Harry Price. And what's interesting is even though Harry Price is seemingly a minor character in this film because he's the one who actually discovered this assertion of the talking mongoose and he throws over that job to Nandor Fodor, Christopher Lloyd actually provides a pretty solid VO in the first act, and he spends a couple of interesting back and forths with Simon Pegg in the movie at the beginning and at the end. It's 96 minutes, rated PG-13, directed and written by Adam Sigel. I ascribed a lot of value to this movie. It's just a weird film. I feel like maybe I put a little bit too much of my personal thoughts on maybe faith and religion or myth, and I thought it was a little bit resonant. I, I I don't know. I think I I feel I was a bit crazy for really enjoying this movie. Bruce, am I going outside the bounds of actually enjoying this film? How did yes. you feel about this? Yes, you okay. are. You okay. are going outside the bounds. <laughs> yeah. No, you're no. not. It's not. It's fine. Um, uh, well, I, I feel like this is a very curious film and I have a real hard time pinning down exactly what it's doing. First of all, I definitely have a hard time pinning down whatever accent uh, Simon Pegg is doing. I don't have any clue what that is. But... Chris Waltz. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't quite work for me. But that being aside, so it's based, like you said, it's based on a real story. It's based on actual events that's that happen in this village and actual accounts of this talking mongoose that no one could ever quite see, but they all claimed it was there and, and real. And okay, how to get about this? This movie. It feels like it wants to be whimsical and the music is always telling me it's musical it's whimsical the music the score is always kind of in that mode or a lot of the time it's in that mode but the movie itself isn't really that whimsical it has moments but it's it's i think it's trying to be a little more philosophical to some degree like very the, deep like sort of I, I i think it's kind of dangerously deep honestly in an era where believing it's fine if people believe things that aren't actually true and are not, that's not a problem to, that kind of the message of this movie kind of is kind of saying like, ah, if people want to believe stuff, that's just not true. That's great. What's the, what's the harm? Really? There's a lot of harm in that right now. I think you can see throughout the world. Um, but that's kind of, once again, that's me ascribing the real world onto this movie, which doesn't really apply either. No, I think, it, it applies though, because I think this movie engages the audience to give their interpretation. So I think yeah. your take is valid. I, yeah, I guess. I mean, I think the the movie is is okay. I think it, what it wants to do is it wants to be this this kind of this discussion between the you know the scientific method and faith and you know whether like where the where the validity lies between those two things or does it lie in both places or can both places have can can they coexist in the same world? I, that's what it's kind of I think getting at, right? But the problem I had with this movie is that. To me, it's so plainly clear where the reality lies. Like the evidence is preponderance of evidence that it lies in a certain direction. And I'll leave it at that because people can watch the movie and you know decide for themselves. But I think it's very, very, very obvious where it lies, which makes me not understand exactly the, the point of the movie. Um, and the other problem I kind of have with the movie, and I don't hate this movie. I, I had a fine time watching it. But it's just, it's kind of, it's very mild-mannered. I think this movie needs to have a little more something. It needs to have a little more bite in some direction. Either it has to be a little more wh truly whimsical or a little more 
serious? Like take this really preposterous idea and make it super serious? I don't know. It's whatever it is, it it doesn't quite go in a direction. And it I think that's road. My, my yeah, that's kind of my problem is it, it feel like it, it's kind of too wishy washy. Um, like I said, I don't hate it, but I didn't love it. I'm going to give it an extra half star just for the post credit sequences that go occur because I kind of loved that. Yeah, and stay honestly, for the end credits, stay for the, end the, credits, the, sense, the sense of humor and self deprecation that's available there made me think like, why did this person make this movie? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> you know, maybe it's the script has nothing to do with the person. I don't know. Because I he's feel an like asshole. This, because yeah, he's an asshole. I, I feel like there could have been a lot more, uh, of that personality thrown into this movie. And I, I think it would have been a better movie, but I, I understand that a director is not the, the whole, the whole voice of a movie necessarily. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of right in the middle on this one. Well, Eric, uh, Bruce said, use a word wishy-washy. Did you feel that this movie was wishy-washy as well? Where do you stand on this film? I don't, but I kind of see where Bruce is coming from. Uh, my thoughts on it. First, it, this movie played a lot like a, like a murder mystery, but there's not a murder, but there's definitely like, like a mystery element to it. Is this uh talking mongoose Jeff? Is this uh is this real? Is it not? And I think it come, becomes pretty clear that the whole thing's a hoax. What I liked what the, the movie did, and I think we're, Bruce might be kind of button up against is Nando Fo Fodor. His character is a skeptic. He doesn't believe any of this. Uh, the the stuff that's presented is done in such a way that it's like, oh, this is this is clearly a hoax. Like, why why does anyone believe this? And I think as it goes on, I kind of I kind of saw how someone could go could get there. And so like this would be like something if you if you see yourself in the movie. Oh, that's where I'm doing this thing in real life. Maybe I can, you know, kind of put a pin in that and recognize it when it comes and I start falling for that. That's kind of where I was going with this. As far as the whimsy stuff, I think, yeah, I suppose. But mo mostly I got the mostly I got the murder mystery vibe without the murder. So I'm not familiar with I'm familiar now with who Nando Fodor is, but I wasn't at the time. And then I looked him up, he's like parapsychologist investigator. And then I was like reading more about him. And I was like, oh, he's kind of like James Randi, like where James Randi would go around and, and, you know, he does like the, the mentalism and magic tricks and stuff, but he does it with full, you know, given full knowledge that this is a trick. And then when other people come and try to uh, say, no, I really talk with the dead. And it's like, oh, do you? All right. Well, oh, you really have uh, mental powers. Okay. Display them, but you have to do them you know, on my terms, otherwise uh, you've proved nothing to me. And that's kind of, that's kind of what I think Nando Fordor is. I guess to Bruce's point, they don't really dig deep into that aspect of it. Although there's a bit of it in there. Um, I would have liked to uh, see him kind of go more into that. And to tell you the truth, I'd like to see more movies like this kind of go deep. Like it'd be cool to see a, a movie about James Randi, but kind of done in the same way where they can, but like kind of go a little harder into the uh, skepticism of it. Well, I, I enjoyed this movie. It's one of these things where I agree, actually, Bruce, with your assessment of this film. It's like pineapple pizza. There's a lot of people who won't really <laughs> just understand pineapple pizza. I'm not saying you don't understand it, I, but it's just a weird mix. And I really loved how this movie was that weird mix and it straddled that balance. It, it was weird. I, I ended up really enjoying this film. I don't know how the mass will feel about Nando Fordor and the talking mongoose. Let's start off with ratings for this film. Eric Holmes, what rating do you give it? Right now, probably a four and a half, just because I wish they would have would have went a little harder in the skepticism. But uh I mean it could also climb because I, I really enjoyed this quite a bit. Four and a half. Okay. And you loved it the most because of it's a four and a half because of why Eric just because I, what I he's like trying to approach. I, I like the I like the mystery of it. I like the I like the characters. I even like Simon Pegg's weird accent, whatever that was. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, Neil Gaiman. Was good. Oh, Neil, Neil Gaiman. Gaiman as the voice of Jeff. Mm -hmm. Loved loved that because uh, uh, Neil Gaiman was doing the the narration at the beginning. I was like, oh, I love this narration. They, the guy sounds a lot like Neil Gaiman. And then the credits came up, Neil Gaiman. I'm like, oh, well, there it is. Um, but yeah, it's it. I think if they would have went harder in the skepticism, this could have been a five, 6.9 star, but as it is four and a half, and I would definitely watch it again for sure. Did you, li did you like Christopher Lloyd? Oh yeah. Christopher <laughs> Lloyd's great. 
<laughs> Christopher Lloyd was great at this. So and, okay. Oh, yes. oh, uh, 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 crap. Mini Driver. Yes. Love, love yeah. Mini, Mini Driver. Mini Driver is really good. She was so good. She was so, it's not a role that she usually plays, a very subtle, uh, reserved woman in this movie. And she's very good. Very good in this movie. So, yeah, I'm giving it four stars, four and a half for Eric. What is your rating, Bruce? Uh, I'll be three stars. Three stars? That's, look, that's a mild recommend. That's not, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. We're, good okay. enough time with it. Yeah. Good, good enough time. Nando Fordor and the Talking Mongoose hits theater September 1st. Tell us what you think of this film. This is Cinematics.